Right, so for instance, I know that recent 18 terabyte hard disk products, for example, use 1022 gigabits per square inch, whereas the next generation of 18 terabyte LTO9 barium ferrite cartridges will only require 12 gigabits per square inch. Now, I think this is where your work with strontium ferrite prototypes is perhaps an indication of where we're heading in the future. Yeah, no, that's exactly right. With strontium ferrite, we're able to reach aerial densities and thus capacity points that not even barium ferrite can achieve. In IBM's research with Fujifilm, we have achieved 317 gigabits per square inch in aerial density on a prototype strontium ferrite particulate media that uh, was developed by Fujifilm. This is about 27 times more than the aerial density used in current state-of-the-art commercial tape drives. And as I was alluding to a moment ago, it's not just the media that needs to change. In addition to introducing strontium ferrite particulate magnetic tape, we also needed a new set of technologies to achieve this new record. That means a new low friction tape head technology to allow the use of very smooth media and a detector that enables reliable detection of data written on the strontium ferrite media when it's read back by an ultra narrow read sensor that was just 29 nanometers wide. With this new prototype, when the tape is being read and streamed over the head at a speed of up to about 15 kilometers per hour, and with our new servo technologies, we are still able to position the head on that tape with an accuracy that is about one and a half times the width of a DNA, DNA molecule, so about three nanometers of positioning accuracy. That's incredible innovation, but I suppose some of our audience might be thinking 317 gigabits per square inch sounds like a lot lower than 1,022 gigabits per square inch. So, Turgai, if hard drives have a much higher aerial density than tape technology, why isn't disk a better bet for the Zettabyte era? Uh, Thank you for the question, Andrew. I don't think so. Uh, we do we do need to be careful not to be confused by the bigger numbers here. This is really one comparison where smaller may actually be a better for the future of big data storage. The problem for the disk drives is already that they have very high aerial densities. So unlike tape, where we have plenty headroom to increase our densities, Notwithstanding the innovation that we need to exploit that potential, the hard disk vendors haven't yet found a way to dramatically increase aerial density still further. And that's because the phenomenon of supermagnetism, which we discussed moments ago, hard disk technology is doing, you know, they're, they're much closer to the supermagnetic threshold limits than the tape is. This isn't just me being partisan about tape, it's just a scientific reality. So why is it so difficult then? I mean, for the disc vendors, I mean. Well, to go beyond current aerial densities and increase capacities, the magnetic particles deposited on the hard disk platters, they need to be so small that they become unstable unless they have extremely high coercivity characteristics which is then very difficult to write data to. Now, as Jeff mentioned earlier, coercivity means that the particles will resist being changed. It's like you said with your Star Trek reference, you cannot change the laws of the physics. Hard disk form factors are already three and a half inches, and that isn't going to change. Therefore, if you really want more capacity, you have to get smaller, which is difficult. This is why the increase in disk drive capacities have slowed down dramatically in recent years. That's really clear. So, I mean, Jeff, where do these new disk drive solutions like Hammer and Mama fit in? Well, the disk drive manufacturers are just trying to get around the barrier of the super paramagnetic limit. These booster technologies, heat-assisted magnetic recording and microwave-assisted magnetic recording, to give them their full names, are designed to boost the aerial density by overcoming the issue of writing this very high coercivity media, even though the bits themselves cannot be reduced in size as dramatically as in the past. 
I think it's worth pointing out these new approaches are both relatively unproven at the kind of scale that will be required, and they will add cost and complexity to production. One of the reasons I'm optimistic about the future as tape is that in comparison to the hard disk drives, LTO technology has a huge amount of headroom to increase the aerial density by using smaller particles that have superior SNR. The work that Mark and his team have been doing proves that we have the capability to achieve tape capacities far in excess of today's standards through a purely evolutionary R&D process. Okay, and do you have anything to add to that? those points, Mark? Um, yeah, I, I'd just like to illustrate what Jeff and Turgai were talking about there. I can show you how much headroom we have to grow capacities before we start having to radically change the fundamental technology used to create LTO tape solutions. This is a chart that's part of the technology roadmap produced by INSIC, which is an industry group made up of different storage vendors, including IBM, Quantum, and HPE. Jeff, Turgai, and myself have all been involved with INSIC reports into storage trends. In the top left, you can see the aerial density of LTO-8 and upcoming LTO-9, and in the bottom right, the aerial density of current hard disk technology and their next-gen prototypes. You'll remember a moment ago we discussed that current 18 terabyte disks use about 1,022 gigabits per square inch aerial density, whereas the next-gen 18 terabyte LTO-9 cartridge will only require about 12 gigabits per square inch. That's what you can see on this chart. We can predict with pretty high levels of confidence that by 2030, it should be possible to achieve LTO capacities of around 720 terabytes per cartridge. Remember, we've just provided a proof of concept for over a 500 terabyte cartridge with our strontium ferrite demonstration, but at an aerial density that's still dramatically lower than that of today's 18 terabyte hard disk drives. In comparison, in order to increase their capacities, you can see the hard disk renders are going sideways with hammer and mammer. That's this invisible horizontal line represents the superparamagnetic threshold. In simple terms, it means it's much easier for tape vendors to deliver high capacity archival storage in the zettabyte era than it will be for disk manufacturers. And as Turgai said, it's not marketing hype, it's just the reality of the science that underpins magnetic recording. It, it does sound as if with you know, the innovative research and engineering that you're working on, that tape is well on the way to meeting some of these future challenges that, as you've so eloquently described earlier, you know, that we're going to face with digital storage in the years ahead. We're kind of approaching the end of our session, but before we wrap up, um, do you have any final points, gentlemen, that you'd like to make in relation to the role of tape in the Zettabyte era? Um, Turgai, why don't we start with you? I think one point is worth making is that this isn't an abstract or something that only relates to geeks like us. Um, clearly, there is a potential for a fundamental mismatch between demand for digital storage and ability for this technology to meet that demand. Uh, now, I don't know how widespread this knowledge is, but the other factor to consider is the environmental impact of storage, especially these days. None of us are saying that you shouldn't invest in this appliance or object storage servers, because for certain applications and services, tape just isn't the right fit. And of course, you can, if you really want to, store all your archive data on spinning disks, even though you're going to need a lot more of it in the future. But that means building more data centers with bigger unprecedented size and, of course, brings other challenges related to mainly energy use and sustainability. I think there are political and social barriers if you simply assume you can keep using and expanding with disk. Scale and cost, financial and environmental, you know, together. Uh, of creating big data centers large enough to hold many disks when LTO tape will have three times more storage density 
at a much lower cost per terabyte. I mean, basically suggests that it's really premature to write off tape. Okay, and so Jeff, before we get all before we all get beamed up, um, what closing remarks would you like to make? Well, I'd just like to mention something that is sadly very pertinent pertinent to today's IT landscape, but which we didn't address today, and that's cybersecurity. Tape can play a critical role in protecting against cyber attacks and ransomware. And when it comes to safeguarding business data, tape can be physically and logically removed from all network connectivity, which creates a physical barrier, which has now become commonly known as the air gap. Once your data is securely offline, it's practically impossible to breach even with some of the more sophisticated randomware attacks that are happening almost daily. And even if the tape was stolen, if the data was encrypted, it's still useless to attempt to extract or subvert information for blackmail or other criminal purposes. And as some of Mark's other researchers demonstrated, you can also make data on tape secure against the kind of encryption cracking methods that might eventually be possible using quantum computing. And that's obviously important if data on tape is intended for long-term archival storage. Mark, one thing I wanted to ask you earlier was whether or not something else might come along at some point to out-tape tape. tape. What's your view on that? Well, undoubtedly, at some point, tape will be replaced. I mean, that's just an inevitable result of progress. However, having said that, digital tape is more than 60 years old, and we're projecting that it has at least another 10 years before it might begin to run into some of the challenges caused by aerial densities. And although there's a lot of discussion about alternative recording media, to be frank, there's no obvious technological candidate to replace tape. I mean, holographic DNA, femtosecond laser etched glass, none of these are capable of scaling to meet our demand for archival storage in the short or even the medium term. So when people say everything is moving to the cloud, what they really mean is... Well, everything may be moving to the cloud, but behind the metaphor, the cloud will probably still have a big tape library behind it. Um, I think LTO tape will remain a viable and vibrant storage category, both in terms of supply and demand for many years to come. It will be an incredible scientific journey to take us there, but I think tape has a bright commercial future. In the end, just as you can't change the laws of physics, I think we should expect tape to live long and prosper. Indeed. Well, gentlemen, it's been a real pleasure to spend time talking with you today. Um, I learned an enormous amount from your expertise, and I'm sure our audience has also, not not least the fact that the cloud is probably just going to be an even bigger tape library. Um, But listen, if you would like to follow us on social media, then here are the details of our LinkedIn and Twitter accounts, as well as our website, lto.org. Um, where you can find lots more tape information, videos, um, our regular series of blog articles, blog bites, and also our quarterly news updates um, called News Bites. Um, Please let us know on social if you found today's discussion interesting. And also, feel free to post any additional questions or topic ideas for our experts to cover in the future. Um, And all that remains to say um, on behalf of the LTO program is thank you very much for joining us today. And of course, please stay safe wherever you are. Thank you and goodbye.